and, and people may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic, he's crazy. He's... No, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. The cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I was, I failed and I went back, I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded. All the things that kicked my ass, I put them all in the cookie jar because at times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, it's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision. I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you went, you went three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy killed you so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. You are. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood in my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You gotta be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not gonna stop. And that's, I took all the negative things, I need to go to the hospital, this and that, and I used it all. Who the hell could even get out of that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stress fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. We all have a cookie jar, and we all have a jar of fuck. It's a jar of fuck, man, where shit just, it just ain't going right. And in Hell Week, what they do in Hell Week, because this is where I really went to the dark side. What they do in Hell Week is they design Hell Week to find your flaws. And they do a really good job of that. It's 130 hours of continuous training. You may get two hours of sleep. And they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality. And then they start Hell Week. And that's the beauty of it. And for me, I'm not some not, you know, nasty God-given guy. You know, I, I don't have a great bit of talent in anything. So what got me through horrible times was the dark side. Was I created, my name is David Goddard. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of me. You wanna break my motherfucking legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So every instructor that put me through Buds, my job, what drove me, was I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face. I wanted you to feel worse than I did and you were going home to a nice warm bed with your wife or your kids and a nice meal and I was still out there in the grip suffering for another 100 hours. I wanted you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very unfucking comfortable and I want you to think about when you went through fucking hell week how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit, knowing I'm not thinking that fucking way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. 
I use the hurt you're trying to put on me, I flip it upside down and use it. You trying to use it for kryptonite? No, it's power pellets for me. I'm, I'm using it for strength. The first thing you have to understand with regards to trying to come to terms with the conception of the shadow is to understand the idea of persona. And persona is the you that you present when you want people to accept and like you. Often like. Let's say that you go to a party and you're trying to impress the people that are there and you're trying to get them to like you. And so you maybe get jabbed out a little bit and you laugh and you know, you're, you go along with everyone so that they like you. And then you go home and you're bitterly resentful about the way that you were put down at this party. And th that's gonna make all sorts of aggressive. I wish I could have said, it's gonna make all sorts of aggressive and venge vengeful thoughts sort of flash through your imagination. Well, the first part of the problem is that you were too much persona, right? You sacrificed yourself in some sense at the party so that people would like you. And in the second part, you're refusing to admit to the existence of those elements of you that would have actually protected you from doing that. So let's say you go home and you're all bitter and resentful and you have fantasies of revenge. I mean, that reveals to you the shadow part of you that's aggressive. And the thing is, you actually need that because if you would have integrated that more successfully into your personality, when you went to the party, you wouldn't have had, let, you wouldn't have had to let people put you down to get them to like you. You know, instead of having a face like this, which says, I'll take anything that's coming my way, you know, you have a face and a stance that's more determined and assertive. And if you manifest that properly, people aren't gonna mess with you to begin with. But you know, you may have already adopted a morality that says, well, I have to be likable and I shouldn't do anything that causes any conflict and I shouldn't ever, you know, hurt anybody's feelings. And so you're just to present yourself as a punching bag and you think that that makes you a good person, but it doesn't. And there's no integration of the shadow in that situation. So you see that at the end of the movie, you know, when I, I mentioned this, when Simba cr climbs up the rock to take control of it, all the female lionesses bare their teeth and he roars. It's like that aggressiveness is integrated into him. And so resentment is a really good emotion for making contact with the shadow side, because if you're resentful about something, it basically reveals two things. It either means that you're immature and you should stop whining and get on with things. You know, someone's asked, this often happens with adolescents who are asked, say, by their mother to clean up their room. They get all resentful about it. It's like, shut up and clean up your room. You know, it's, it's not that much to ask. Or, so that can be a gateway into the observation of your own immaturity. Or, it's possible that you're resentful because people really have been poking at you too much and taking and, and taking shot, cheap shots at you and oppressing you. But what that means is that you've got some things to say that you haven't been willing to say or don't know how to say, right? You can't stand up for yourself properly. And in order to do that, you have to grow some teeth and be willing to use them. And again, that's something that might violate your morality because you might say, well, I shouldn't be able to bite people. And the thing is, yes, you should be able to bite people hard. And if you're able to bite them, then generally you don't have to. But they need to know that you can, because otherwise, especially people who are badly socialized, they'll just keep encroaching on you and encroaching on you and encroaching on you and encroaching on you until you, you put up a wall. Like someone who's really well put together won't do that, you know, because they're sophisticated. But if you run into people who only have boundaries because other people impose them on them and you won't do it, you're gonna be the bullied one in the office, for example. You're not gonna get a raise. People aren't gonna credit you with your own work. Other people are gonna take credit for it. You know, and you're gonna go home angry because you're doing your best and you're trying to get along with everyone and nothing ever goes your way. Well, it's because you're a pushover. And you think that's good because you confuse harmlessness with, with morality. It's, it's a bad, it's not right. Just because you can't do any damage doesn't mean you're moral. It just means you're, you don't have the capability for mayhem. And that makes you a pushover. I mean, the Yogi stuff is very, very dark, you know. It's very dark because his notion of what constitutes a moral human being is much different from the typical view. He really thinks you get that horrible side of yourself integrated so it's up there where you can use it. Because otherwise you're, you're dangerous.